we're done. We can't. We're done for the day. Look. That's why. These bandsaw blades, I think they're dull. I don't really know what the problem is, but there's screws dropping out of the bandsaw. I don't have, like, look at this. I don't even know where this goes. We're, we're getting wavy lines. I, we just, we need to be done before somebody gets hurt. So you want to start a business. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. Welcome back, friends. So Jenny deserves a round of applause. You can't applaud yourself. Um, I think I can. But it's like super embarrassing. You know those award shows? Like you never see the person getting the award clapping for themselves unless it was like a team award. Because it's not as cool as me. Jenny sold two huge orders of cutting boards this week. We talked about in the last video, if you haven't seen, that we started selling these cutting boards to realtors in bulk because we were doing so much work for the first sale why not just have them buy 15, 20 boards? Because the person that's gonna buy one is gonna buy 20. So we might as well just take the money for 20 right up front. But that meant Jenny had sold more boards than we had inventory for. And so I, we have some time. They're not all gonna ship out tomorrow, but we needed to restock on cutting boards. If you saw our first video about cutting boards, you saw that we did, what was it like? 25 boards in two days or something like that. But we built enough materials to have like 40 something boards. This go round got a lot more boards made. cutting boards, we start out by getting long boards of rough sawn lumber and we cut them down into manageable pieces. So for us, that's typically 18 inches long. And then from there, we joint one face and one edge so that we can make straight cuts up against the fence of the bandsaw. So a lot of you have suggested that we mill up longer boards than 18 inches and then chop our cutting boards out of that on, you know, the cross cut sled on the table saw. And we've tried that. It's a little faster if you're building two or three boards, but the problem we ran into was that when you mill up a longer board, you have to take off more material. It's just how it works. And with 40 or 50 boards worth of material, we got a much lower yield by doing that. The strips are smaller. We have to use more strips per cutting board and that results in fewer boards overall at the end of the batch. And that's when things started to go wrong. We milled a couple of those boards up and the lines were really wavy. So we decided to quit for the day and come back to it the next morning. And then that's when this happened. We're done. We can't. We're done for the day. Look. That's why. These bandsaw blades, I think they're dull. I don't really know what the problem is, but there's screws dropping out of the bandsaw. I don't have, like, look at this. I don't even know where this goes. We're, we're getting wavy lines. I, we just, we need to be done before somebody gets hurt. So you want to start a business. Right out of the gate that morning, I could not get a straight cut to save my life. I thought it was just because we were tired the day before that, we, you know, like, you know how it gets. Your hands get tired from pushing lumber across the machines. But that wasn't the problem. This was incredibly frustrating. We had to stop production twice. Once was sort of at the end of the day, so that's not too big of a deal. But the next day, I had to completely stop the cutting boards. And it, like, you can't halt production in a production company. I mean, you can, but like, it's not good. And we like, we just had to self-diagnose the issue. I kind of thought it might be a dull bandsaw blade, but I was trying to eliminate everything else before I just went and spent a bunch of money on new bandsaw blades. I was looking at adjusting all the bearings. I was looking to make sure that everything was set up properly. Like I said, we had screws dropping out of there. So I had to go through the whole machine with Loctite and make sure that all the screws were put in their proper place. I mean, yeah, I probably should have done that when I first got the saw, but that was when we were living in Mississippi and we only had a day or two to unbox the saw and start using it. So we just didn't get around to it. So while we were trying to diagnose what was wrong, we found out that the fence, the bandsaw fence was like wiggling, maybe a half an inch in both directions. Yeah, it was nuts. Now, Jenny didn't know about that until just now, but like, yeah, I had to tighten down the fence because it was like moving as we were pushing the wood through. So I thought that was the problem, but then we tried it again and the blade, the 
everything was just wandering everywhere. A little slithery little snake. <laughs> I'm a snake, have you seen that? So we ordered new bandsaw blades, we adjusted all the screws, I l replaced a couple of different bearings, um, and I, this is what I thought would fix the issue. And we had to wait a couple of days. Fortunately for us, we were gonna be out of town anyway, working our Air Force job with the Hurricane Hunters. So by the time that we came back, we had the blades and we were ready to roll. So here's the moment of truth. So this blade was like buttery smooth. I didn't know a bandsaw could cut that smoothly. I'm just used to seeing the cuts like kind of wavy, but to be honest, all these strips looked like we cut them on the table saw or on the miter saw. They were so straight and perfect. I was really impressed, honestly. The blade that we're using now that it's gonna be really hard to beat is the wood slicer from Highland Woodworking. This bandsaw blade is pretty special because it's got a skip tooth design, so it cuts down on the vibrations and oscillations going through the wood. Uh, they've got hardened teeth, so they stay sharper for longer. It's just a really nice bandsaw blade, and you get them cut to any length that you want for your saw. They're not a sponsor. We don't take tool sponsors, but they're a great company, and if you're looking for a bandsaw blade, you should check them out. They're a woodworking store in Atlanta. We hung out there a few times for WorkbenchCon, and uh, it's just a great shop, and it's really cool that we can support them at the same time. So in our process, for these cutting boards, we cut all of these strips to an inch and a half wide because we know the bandsaw cuts are gonna be a little wavy and we're gonna lose quite a bit of material when we're joining them and planing them and everything like that. And usually we come out with a board that's a little over an inch thick. So that's what we're used to. But with these new bandsaw blades, these boards are over an inch and a half thick. Like they're massive. It just, it changes a lot, which is a good thing because now we can get a higher yield of boards. But that's gonna lead to more strips, which is more boards, which is a higher yield, which is more money from the material that we're buying, which is awesome. And so now we have to go back and kind of update some of our processes and checklists um, for how we make these cuts. So we finished this batch of boards and what did it come out to? Like 47, was that the, whatever. You could do the math from the thumbnail. So we, we it should take three days. Uh, barring another catastrophe <laughs> to build another batch of boards like this. So if you want to know more behind the scenes of exactly how we do, what our process actually looks like, you can join the stud stack. That's where we pretty much pull the curtain back on our business and show everybody exactly what we do step by step, detail by detail, because all that detail would not make for a great YouTube video. Um, but the stud stack is where you can go get that. Plus, you can get the opinion of 50 other business owners. So we got a huge group now. Um, it's almost getting too big. So uh, I don't know if we're going to close it or, or raise the price or what, but we got to figure out a way to like keep it a certain. Anyway, go check out the stud stack before it's too late. So you want to run a business. You think what we're doing is kind of cool and you want to try it out for yourself. Be prepared to become a fireman or a fireman woman because you're going to be putting out a lot of fires. So many things change and sometimes go sour and are unexpected and you just have to deal with them on a weekly basis. And some of you guys just didn't get this on the bank video. Yes, the bank sucks, but if it wasn't the bank, it was gonna be something else. If it's not the bank, it's gonna be the CPA. If it's not the CPA, it's gonna be the bandsaw blades. If it's not the bandsaw blades, it's gonna be, it could be the customer who's taking too long or who doesn't pay or has an issue. It's always going to be 
something. So instead of trying to solve every single problem and getting to the bottom of why the bank sucks so bad, you should just solve the schedule. You can beat any problem with persistence and patience. As excruciating as that is, you have to build in time for patience and persistence in your schedule. So thanks for hanging out with us and we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the game. Stick to the plan. Ask me how